Here I've got a 1941 Philco radio that I've taken out of its cabinet. Someone had um, fixed the speaker with some speaker cement and it just looks, doesn't make a very good sound. It's uh, rattly and horrible. And I've been meaning to fix this for quite some time, but the speaker looks pretty hot, far gone. I might be able to recone it, but I have to get a, a kit. So, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna replace the speaker with another one. I've got a, well, that I've taken out of another radio, which isn't the same type of speaker. This, this speaker has a coil in it that is called an electrodynamic speaker, where it uses the coil of the speaker as part of the power supply. You can see that um, the speaker cone is all hard and um, not flexible, but it looks like the spider's okay. So probably it could be repaired with, um, if a, a new cone was attached to that, sp that spider and um, field and coil. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it right now and um, put on this uh, other one here. This uh, speaker is a bit bigger and it is a permanent magnet speaker, but it has the transformer, the audio transformer in there. So I'm going to put that in. But what I'm going to have to do is the screw holes, only one screw, uh, will fit in but when I put the screw in that to hold it on it's too far forward so what I think I'll do is I'll just epoxy it on here and um, I'm going to use one of the old I'll need to um, uh, take a some kind of a, a substitute for that uh, coil in the speaker that field coil and I'm going to have to use some kind of a choke and I think I will use one of the one of the transformers that I broke in the last video. This here can still be used as a choke. So I'm going to measure the inductances of the chokes, and um, I'm going to measure the inductance of this field coil and see if I can um, get one of them uh, if if they're similar in resistance and inductance. The resistance is the important factor. The DC resistance is the important factor in a field coil because it also drops a voltage and you don't want too high a voltage on the tubes. So I'm going to have to do some investigation with a, an ohmmeter. The coil has a, shows about 6,000 ohms and ne neither of the other coils are anywhere near that. The one on the left with the colored wires coming out is about 1200 or something like that. So another alternative that I have is to just put a resistor in there and I think that's what I'll do. A 10 watt, maybe 6,000 ohm resistor. I'll see if I have it in stock. Here's the schematic of the radio. And right down here, it, right there is the electrodynamic coil which goes, here's your rectifier, and um, you have a pi-type filter here with a coil in there, the inductor in there, and there, the electricity, the power goes through, here's rectified, and is smoothed by this capacitor here, the coil, and this capacitor here. And here, your DC goes to the tubes, and actually is goes through and you don't have a very high voltage on there that says 91 volts on the output tube obviously it's dropped across here that's 200 ohms the input to the the output transformer is 200 ohms so anyway I'm going to try a 6,000 uh, ohm 
resistor in that and see if that has the same effect as a smoothing as a choke. Here I found two resistors and I put them in parallel and they add up to 6,640 ohms. So I'll wire that in to the circuit and see if um, we get any results. Well, and I'll hook up the speaker. One of the interesting things about this radio is all these tubes are wired up so that they will um, be across uh, line voltage. This one is not a tube. It's called a ballast resistor. And what it is is a piece of nichrome wire wound around a mica insulator and it drops the voltage. It heats up and acts like a this does the same thing as um, the filament of a tube and gives the, as these all add up to 115 volts, this one makes up the difference. Some early radios used a resistance cord that would heat up. Some used a big resistor. And this uses what's called a ballast tube or ballast resistor, but it's a slightly different. I think this was um, uniquely used by Philco. Another thing about this radio is it uses Loctal tubes, which were designed primarily not to come out. The little pins, you just push them in like that and they stay in pretty rigid. A lot of people don't like Loctal. I don't have any, I don't see any problem with them, but uh, some, some radio collectors just hate Loctal tubes. They hate the Loctal socket because they they have their own um, problems. They tend to make poor contact after many years of use. Anyway, uh, that's about it for the unique things about this radio. So we'll hook it up and see what happens. Some of the wiring in this radio is starting to crack. This is power wiring here. And this one here looks pretty bad. You can see it there, the red one, it's cracking. And if that, um, that could give a dead short and blow something. So I'll have to replace these wires. But first we're going to see if I can get it working. One thing you have to make note on this particular radio is that if you unplug the ballast resistor, there's two notches. One is for 220 and one is for 120. Apparently this radio was um, designed for export around the world. So um, if you live in a 120 volt jurisdiction and you plug it in and this is in wrong, it's set for 220, you'll quickly notice that the bulb glows at half brightness. So you just have to watch out for that and change the position of where you plug it in, where the notch goes. I've hooked up the old uh, the old coil and the new speaker, and um, the radio is giving a good tone and uh, it tracks well across the band. So uh, I'm just going to have to find some substitute for that uh, field coil. The resistors didn't work well, so I'm going to have to uh, um, go through my chokes and. Uh, find something that uh, gives the right voltages. I just realized that um, this makes no sense. This field coil being 6,000 ohms. I've never seen one that high. And when I put the 6,000 ohm uh, resistor that I had in there, it uh, didn't, the radio didn't work. And um, so I'm going to measure it with a regular uh, ohmmeter. Okay, I've put the, the field coil. I've hooked it up to the fluke scope meter and put it in um, resistance measurement mode and I'm getting 447 ohms. And I'd earlier measured it with another ohmmeter and that's what it is. So the LCR meter is measuring it wrong, probably because it uses a an AC, um, maybe a square waveform to measure the 
resistance and which is okay for resistors but when you if you use a coil if you measure the resistance if you're thinking you're measuring the dc resistance of a coil it will be off it'll measure about 10 times or more what it actually is supposed to be so here we know what we what mistake we've made so i'll put a 447 ohm or something close to that dc resistor and it should work Right here, I've uh, tried uh, a wire-wound resistor. It's about 500 ohms, roughly, and it seems to be working okay. A little bit of hum, but nothing to worry about. Um, and here I've connected the two wires from the output transformer, and there's a third one which I'm going to uh, clip off and tape up. These will all be taped up. I've soldered, I just soldered them and um, they will be taped up. And uh, I'm going to leave this radio on for a while and I'm going to test how hot that resistor is. If it gets too hot, I'll put in, I have another, I have a 10 watt resistor that I could put in. But I'll just leave it on for about half an hour and see if it, if I can smell it. If not, I'll uh, put it in to the, Maybe put it near the chassis, somehow incorporate it into the chassis so that the chassis can act as a heat sink. Here I've taped up all the transformer wires. I taped up the resistor. I'm going to leave it for half an hour, an hour, and see if it um, causes any, um, if I get any smells coming out of the tape. If it, uh, tends to smell I'll I'll uh, replace it with a bigger resistor so uh, anyway it looks fairly neat and um, it plays but um, we still have the problem of the wire that's gone rotten there and there so I'm gonna have to do a bit of rewiring in this wire in this radio and uh, then I will align it it seems to lack sensitivity. It's okay in the AM band, but in shortwave, it seems to lack sensitivity. So still a fair amount of work to do on this radio. We've got a really nasty piece of wire here. I'm going to replace it. It goes up to here. I've got, um, piece here that uh, is in very good condition and uh, of a similar color so I'll replace it with that. The new piece of wire I've paralleled with the old piece of wire without taking the old piece of wire out yet. I um, stripped the new piece of wire at each end cleaned it with steel wool and then soldered it on paralleling the old piece of wire. Now I'll clip off the old piece of wire. There we have a nice clean replacement of the old wire. Another wire that I don't uh, like, it's pretty cracked. I want it to short out to the chassis is this one. It goes down here, behind here. And goes down to right underneath the ballast tube. Looks like 117 volts. One side of the 117 volts connects to it. So I'll remove that one too. Replace it. The old piece of wire came off uh, this on-off switch quite nicely. And uh, I soldered the new piece of wire on. And it looks doesn't look like a good solder joint, but it is. It's just the color uh, due to the light I'm using. But that turned out to be a nice solder joint. So I'm going to connect it at the other end now and pull the old piece of wire out. You can just see right there where the red, the new red piece is going to go on, connect to the white wire there. Here's another rotten piece of wire I'm going to have to replace. 
I've removed it from the terminal there. It just um, twists it off as it's a solid core wire. And in this case, I'll just cut it out. There isn't enough room really for both of the, it goes right to that point there. So I will just cut it out and put in the new piece of wire as there isn't enough room for both pieces in the same space. I've replaced the worst of the rotten wires in the radio and um, increased uh, its uh, sensitivity by adjusting these two powder capacitors here. The tracking seems good and it receives short wave. Although um, it probably needs a long wire antenna to receive a short wave uh, with sensitivity. So anyway, um, the IF wasn't off. Everything seems to be pretty well okay in this radio. So I'll uh, just leave it at this stage and uh, it plays well. And uh, I don't have any problems with it. I'm going to put it back in the case and um, use it uh, on a regular basis. No place to stay for follow -up Here the radio care. is uh, from out of the lower mainland I'll are expected to cover put the it back in its case and it's uh, working very well. As Aaron MacArthur reports it's Wildfire season could come earlier than usual. This even works well on distance stations, although it's quite early evening right now, so the, the skip hasn't started kicking in in a long time. Yeah, I can Well, listen, we, we, we know that he's also going to benefit by playing with a team. I 